under my house. And finally, it released me, and I fell to the ground, laying there. I didn't say, uh, Matthew, my son Matthew, please come hither to your father and give attention to the words that are coming out of my mouth. Please run yonder way, find thy grandfather, and receive assistance from him for my benefit. I didn't say that. I landed on the ground and, and started screaming, top of my lungs afraid to move and when he heard me he came dad what's the matter and uh, I said go get your grandpa and that was it that was it um, it I I don't serve the God that is making me specify everything to ask him for I don't know it's I'm like a little child little child is in some big thing and they run to mom and daddy and they, they want help. They don't know how to, if they could fix it themselves, they would. And so anyway, but I've been down the road. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Uh, consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Light mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Been there. Oh, anyway, I was going to tell you about the T-shirt. They took me to the hospital and uh, to the uh, St. John's burn unit, it's about an hour away. I got a, everybody said, well, you got a helicopter ride out of it. Uh, let me tell you something. That was the most expensive and the most painful helicopter. I didn't, in fact, I didn't even get to look out the window. I'm laid there on a, on a board, strapped down, neck brace and all this stuff. And uh, there's a nurse there giving me an IV. And, uh, I mean, it hurts. It hurts worse than electrocution. And she said, oh, don't worry, I've done this many times before. And I said, not on me, you haven't. And uh, so I get to the hospital. They cut all my clothes off of me, everything. And then they come in, laid the warm blankets on me. Then they come in after they did all the tests and uh, say, you can go home now. And I'm going, no, I can't. You got all my clothes cut up. So the... Um, the liberal hospital chaplain went down to the gift shop and found a pair of sweatpants and a t-shirt. I got a t-shirt out of it. Uh, but I have been down that road before. Uh, Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Light mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest mine enemies say I have prevailed against him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. And I want to tell you something. I, God is not interested in letting the devil get have any words over you. Uh, but I have trusted in thy mercy, not in God's justice, but in his mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Uh, Psalm 16, preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. You, wanna, you, you believe in the preservation? You believe in God's preservation? Ask for it. Okay? David said, preserve me, O God. I have, I have asked God that I don't know how many times. God, you keep me because I'm pretty sure I can't keep myself. And just all kinds of things like that in the book of Psalms. And I just, I don't know, uh, you know, this is just on my heart. You know, here in Psalm 74, O God, why cast thou us, us off forever? I've been there, okay? Um, you, just, you just start going through the Psalms and start reading them. Um, there's been, to, O Lord God of my salvation, I've cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry. Uh, you know what incline means? You're asking God to bow down to hear you. Um, and he did. Jesus came all the way down to this earth just so he could hear our prayers. And I, just all kinds of good things like that. Why would you want to change the Bible for crying out loud? I, I like it the way it is. Uh, but anyway, maybe somebody out there needed that. Maybe they just needed uh, uh, some help. Maybe they just needed to pick me up. Maybe just they just needed some medicine. Um, I am on medicine for, for various things, primarily pain. Um, and some of you know what that is, know what that's like. And uh, I don't necessarily like having to take it every day, but it, it sure helps. But when, I'm, when my soul is distressed and when I'm, in, when I'm just really, really, really down and out, um, I will take the medicine. I'll go to the book, and I'll take the medicine, and God knows how to cure and heal all the wounds. Can I get an amen out of somebody? Um, the devil has got his long, sticky talons into our homes, into our children. 
Uh, here's an article from Associated Press. New York PD surveillance of students called disgusting. Now, let me tell you what this, let me tell you that everything that's going on right now is a setup. Um, I don't like the Muslims coming in, taking over the country. I'm against that, but I'll tell you what I'm against more than anything is that is the federal government coming in and doing it already. Um, this government is not uh, we the government. It's supposed to be we the people. And so listen to this. At Columbia University and elsewhere, the fear that the New York Police Department might secretly be infiltrating Muslim students' lives has spread beyond them to others who find the reported tactics disgusting, as one teenager put it. NYPD surveillance of Muslims on a dozen college campuses in the Northeast is a surprising and disappointing violation, students said Saturday in reaction to the Associated Press reports that revealed the intelligence gathering at Columbia and elsewhere. Quote, if this is happening to innocent Muslim students, who's next? You think about that. You think about it. See, we don't mind them going after all these Muslims and shaking down the Muslims. Yeah, yeah, they're terrorists, okay? But it, they don't stop there, okay? 6,000 years of human history and political governments will tell you that it won't stop there, people. And they're already, they're already starting to go after the, the people who are on the terror watch list, and that's me and you, okay? So it won't stop. It's, it's going to be to the religious fundamentalists. That's us. And so anyway, if this is happening to innocent Muslim students, who's next? As freshman Dinah Morris, 18, of Amherst, Massachusetts. I'm the child of an immigrant, and I was just blown away by the news. It's disgusting. Documents obtained by the AP showed that the NYPD used undercover officers and informants to infiltrate Muslim student groups. An officer even went whitewater rafting with students and reported on how many times they prayed and what they discussed. Police also trawled college websites and blogs, compiling daily reports on the activities of Muslim students and academics. Don't you understand it? Do you know one of the, the, one of the conspiracy ideas behind the assassination of JFK? Uh, this comes out uh, by way of uh, the, uh, the trial that Jim Garrison had done in New Orleans. There was, an, there was an undercover FBI, CIA, slash NSA, whatever, agent, um, Guy Bannister, that had an office down there, supposed to be a private detective, but he was working in, he had contacts inside the anti-Cuban uh, movement, anti-Castro, this and that and the other. He had little spies everywhere. The government, all the way back in the 60s and 70s, was infiltrating radical college groups trying to figure out what they were. Let's skip forward. Here's something that I know for a fact. Okay, it's not conspiracy theory. Um, Timothy McVeigh should have never been allowed to even be part of that. That bomb should have never gone off in Oklahoma City. Okay? And I know that he was not the lone gunman. Neither was Oswald. Timothy McVeigh, that bomb should have never been allowed. It should have never gone that far. Because the group that Timothy McVeigh was part of, one of these white supremacist Christian identity, and if you don't know what that is, that's people who think they're Jews. And I'm, I'm going to have a lot to say on this in next week's Watchmen broadcast. Okay? Because I'm telling you it's as dangerous as a cocked pistol in, a, in the hands of a three-year-old. But anyway, he, he was part of one of these white supremacist groups that are in and around um, eastern Oklahoma and northwestern Arkansas. Um, the um, the uh, Ku Klux Klan is located in Harrison, Arkansas. Okay, And I can tell you there is a heavy infiltration down there of these white supremacists and Christian identity people who say because they're white Caucasian, they're the real ten tribes of Israel. That's nonsense. But anyway, Timothy McVeigh was, was involved in those groups. So was an FBI agent who had infiltrated those groups and some of the plans to bomb the Murrah Federal Building came out of that group. And the FBI agent knew about it. Knew about it. That bomb should have never gone off. But they infiltrate groups. They infiltrate uh, s s churches and uh, different functions. They're, they're looking everywhere. Continuity of government, my eye. Um, so anyway, all part of the NYPD's efforts to keep tabs on Muslims throughout the region is part of the department's anti-terrorism efforts. 
See, we were sold this bill of goods with the Patriot Act. Let's just watch everybody. Let's watch all the Muslims. It's not going to stop there. Uh, police built databases of where Muslims live and worked, where they prayed, even where they watched sports. You think you're not being watched? Listen, I can pull up here. Um, I can go up here right now. Um, and uh, let's see. I'm going to do a refresh here. I have the sermon audio webpage pulled up. I see that about 222 people are watching the Pastor Mike Online live broadcast. Every month I get a report from Sermon Audio, and they're the good guys. But Sermon Audio sends out a report of who was watching from what country, and it even breaks it down by state. How do they know that? Your IP address. You have an IP address where you're sitting at right now, and I guarantee you there's probably some, some computer somewhere that's generating a list of who's listening to this right now. Guarantee you. Okay? So you know what? Quit trying to hide. Quit trying to hide. Because uh, you can't. But anyway, they're going, they're going after our kids. That's one story. Uh, here's another one. I pulled up on uh, World Net Daily. Uh, and somebody drew my attention to this last week, and I appreciate it. Homeschoolers can't be taught that gay sex is sinful. Homeschooling families will soon be forbidden from teaching that homosexual sex is sinful as part of their schooling program, according to the government of Alberta, Canada. You say, well, hey, hey that's Canadians, eh? Yeah, that's not bothering us, eh? We're down here in America, eh? Um, it, listen, it'll, it'll fly down. If it's up here, it's going to roll down. Um, under the Provinces Education Act, homeschoolers and religious schools will be banned from, quote, disrespecting people's differences. Um, whatever the nature of schooling, homeschool, private school, or Catholic school, we do not tolerate disrespect for differences, said Donna McCole, uh, who is with the education minister in Canada. Uh, you can affirm the family's ideology in your family life. You just can't do it as part of your educational study and instruction. Now, I'm going to stop right here. You have heard me, some of you have disagreed. You've heard me preach, and I have, been, I have been blasted on the Internet for even daring to preach a sermon out of Romans 13. And let me, let me tell you where I'm going with this. Romans 13, I'm opening up my can of King James here. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. And I'm going to tell you something. If it's wrong for you to run a stop sign, a cop has a right to pull you over. It's, that's what that means. Okay, That is what that means. It is not unscriptural to stop at a stop sign. It's not unscriptural to get a driver's license. It's not unscriptural to pay taxes. It's not unscriptural to uh, any of these other laws that we don't like. It's not unscriptural to do that. It is unscriptural and against the Bible. You see, if you don't like the, uh, the homosexual infiltration into the public schools, then you have a right as an American, and I guess as a Canadian, to take your children, keep them home, and homeschool your children. And in the state of Missouri, the state of Missouri does not and cannot, according to the, according to the law, cannot tell homeschool students that they can and cannot learn certain things. The state of Missouri does exercise... Um, it's right of governance to make sure that homeschoolers are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Because I have, in 14 years of running a Christian school, I have taken in homeschoolers, quote unquote. I took in a homeschooler one time. He should have been on an eighth grade level. He was performing at a fourth grade level because they weren't homeschooling him. They were just keeping him out of school. So the state of Missouri has certain standards. According, you have to log the hours. You have to log the hours and, and, and keep a log of what they're being taught. But the state of Missouri is not telling you what to, what to teach. And so I agree with that. The state, as far as I'm concerned, has a right to do that. But when the state, whether it's Alberta or Missouri, when the state says to you in your home, with your children, you cannot teach your children that homosexuality is a sin, then the Bible says, dis 